Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you on today for your presence in the sanctuary. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome. Look like we got all family this morning. Come on, just celebrate God for your family member this morning. Amen. Just look up and say, I'm glad to see you this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm glad to see you this morning. Hallelujah. He's so good. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Amen. Father God, we love you. We magnify you. We bless you on today. God, we come in with our hands lifted up, surrendering to you today. God, we come in with thanksgiving on our hearts, oh God, saying that we're thankful for every little thing that you've done for us. God, we just bless you for this opportunity to be able to come and to give you praise and worship on today. We pray right now, Lord, that you would receive these praises and that you will receive our worship, Lord, that they might bring a fresh savor to your nostrils, oh God, Lord, that we might not come in, oh God, thinking it's about us, but it's all about you today. Lord, if you find anything that shouldn't be, we pray right now that you would remove it. Lord, that we can bring you a true and a sincere praise today. Lord, that these praises might unlock someone's blessing. That this worship, oh God, Lord, might penetrate, Lord, through the dark places of their hearts, oh God. That you might be able to reach them in a dark time. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do, for what you've already done. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And give God some praise. Come on. Give him some praise right there. Hallelujah.
Come on and worship him right there with the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, God. We worship you. Hallelujah. Now give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Consuming fire. Sweet perfume. Your awesome presence fills the room. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. So come and bow down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give him glory on today. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give him some glory in the place. Amen. Come on, with the fruit of your lips, give him glory. Hallelujah. He is in the room on today, man. Sweet spirit in this place, amen. Hallelujah, we give him glory. Amen. Amen. If you're happy about being in the house of the Lord, I dare you to make some noise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's hard to come out of worship. I know it is. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's so good. Amen. Hallelujah. We give honor on today to the Lord and Savior. We also give reverence to our pastor and Lady Moss on this morning. Amen. Would you help me celebrate our pastor and, and first lady of this house, Pastor pa Moss? Lady Moss, come on. Let's celebrate them. Love on them this morning. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. And for Pastor Moss, amen, and your directions. Uh, we take this time out also to acknowledge our Bishop, Bishop Mark C. McGuire, Sr. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we also take this time out to say Happy Father's Day to our Bishop, amen, and to our Pastor, amen. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day to you, Pastor Moss. Happy Father's Day to you, Bishop. And certainly we do not want to leave out um, our spiritual covenant with the Net One Love Network, um, Bishop Von McLaughlin and Lady Narlene in Jacksonville, Florida. Amen. We salute them on today. 
Hallelujah. And we also say happy Father's Day to Bishop McLaughlin. Amen. To all the fathers in the room, we say happy Father's Day to you this morning. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for all the fathers. Hallelujah. 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 God is so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless him. Hallelujah. And we give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I look like it's still family that just fed no, no visitors, no first time. Amen. Come on, celebrate family. Amen. I, amen. God is good and he is worthy of the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us lift up our pastor this morning. Father God, we come. We thank you. We bless you. Amen. As you have already entered into this place, shown your presence. Oh God, we lift you up. We magnify you. We glorify you. Now we lift up our pastor. God, we pray, Lord, that you would give him the words to say to your people. Lord, that these words might bless us, that they might bring healing, deliverance, correction, oh God, and strength. Lord, that these words might, uh, God, Lord, heal the broken places and mend us, oh God, that we might be able to leave out of this place and tell someone that uh, do not know you, Lord, that you're still King of kings and Lord of lords, and that you have all power in your hands, and that you can do anything but fail. We bless you in advance for the victory that's already won. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, celebrate him like you believe that on today. And like you're expecting him to move on your behalf. Hallelujah. Come on, give him the best praise you can muster up on today. And let somebody know that Jesus is still Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus! 
Declare out of your own mouth that he's able. Hallelujah. He's able to deliver. He's able to heal. He's able to bless. He's able to provide. He is able to do anything and everything that you need him to do. God is able. He is amazing. Amen. So we salute God, the Heavenly Father, on this day for Father's Day. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise him because he's fathered you along the way. Amen. Hallelujah. When your friends and family had left you and forsaken you, have never checked up on you, have forgotten all about you, God was still there in the midst of it all. He said he will never leave nor forsake you. Hallelujah. So if you can't depend on no one in this uh, earthly realm. You can depend on your heavenly father. He will always be there. Hallelujah. In the midst of whatever it is you're going through. See, friends and family can be finicky at times. They only want to be fair weather friends. They want to be around when everything is going good. But we serve a God that is there. Even in your most tragic moments in life. Even in your hardest times. Even when you messed up. When you blew it. When you blew it all up. When you tore it apart. When you caused it to fall to pieces. He is still there. So let's give our Heavenly Father a surrounding praise. Let's give him all the glory. For he is worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
just to remind you if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side where would you be some of us would be in a grave some of us would be in a mental institution some of us would be still addicted to crack to drugs or whatever some of us would be locked up in prison but God hallelujah but God he's a mighty God we serve but God he's a deliverer but God he's a way maker but God he's a healer but God he's a friend but God hallelujah I don't care what it looks like. You ought to have that in your spirit. That's a part of your arsenal. Everything looks bleak right now, but God, hallelujah, because he's going to make it bright in a moment. Hallelujah, friends and family, man, forsaken you, but God, he'll never leave you. He'll never turn his back on you. Hallelujah, your money might not be right right now, but God will make a way out of no way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be about to lose your mind, but God will bring about peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. You might be depressed right now, but God will bring you joy that is unspeakable and full of his glory. Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate the risen king. I know it's just a few of us, but here's the requirement that God said. He said, I don't need 5,000. I don't need 500. I don't need 100. I just need two to be in agreement. Hallelujah. Two. Because he said, where two are gathered in my name, he is there in the midst of us. And it looked like it's more than two. It's still a few. Hallelujah. So if you just want God to be in the midst of your life, if you just want God to be in the midst of this place, if you just want God to be in his presence, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All you got to come into an agreement and just say hallelujah because the Bible also declares that hallelujah where the praises of God is. He inhabits. He inhabits. Hallelujah. So if you want God to dwell in your life, all you got to do is praise him. If you want God to dwell in your home, all you got to do is praise him. If you want God to dwell in this church, all you got to do is praise him. And watch this. If you want God to dwell in your heart, all you got to do is praise him. Hallelujah. And the beauty of him being in the midst or in the presence. Hallelujah. It's when he is here, everything becomes new. Everything is rearranged. Everything is different. If you allow him to do what he wants to do in your life, he'll make a way. He'll make it better. Hallelujah. We got to quit looking for instant gratifications and just wait patiently on God to do what he's going to do. If we wait patiently for God, we'll divert a whole bunch of mess. We'll divert a whole bunch of stuff and things. We'll divert a whole bunch of trouble hallelujah if we just wait patiently on the Lord and allow him to have his way and so while you wait just worship while you wait just pray while you wait just serve while you wait just praise while you wait just give hallelujah you'll see God do a phenomenal thing in your life hallelujah he'll change it it'll be better than it ever has been before hallelujah even in the midst listen Paul had to realize God had to say it's going to be hard for you I'm about to convert you but you're about to have some trouble Trouble. Hallelujah. So anytime uh, uh, God pokes you out the hand of the enemy, the enemy is coming for some trouble. He's coming to start some stuff with you. Amen. Because he don't like the fact that you done changed sides, you done switched lanes, you done got right with God, and you want your life to be better than to be perfect. Hallelujah. So he's going to bring some trouble. But listen. All that Paul went through, he never backed down, he never bucked, he never cried, he never ran away, he never turned his back on God. He just trusted and believed God. That's what we have to do. Even when trouble comes, when it's overwhelming the mouth, when the eyes are overwhelming, we serve a big God. We just got to trust that God is going to move phenomenally in your life. Hallelujah. I don't care if you ain't got two pennies to rub together. If you serve the God that we serve, we declare that he is Lord of all. Hallelujah. He's going to make a way out of no way. He's going to turn your upside down life and break your right side up. If you just believe and trust and obey him, watch God move in your life. You just got to believe, trust and obey. Hallelujah. Let me get on with announcements. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the most high, most powerful, omnipotent God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Join us for Bible study 
on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. every Thursday. Hallelujah. Until the uh, time has changed. Uh, amen. It was at noon, but now it's at 6.30. So if you have uh, the desire to come to Thursday Bible study, you are able to attend. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen. Also, we have foundation class every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, Bible study on Thursdays is taught by Pastor Ken Moss. Amen. And uh, foundational class is taught by uh, Elder Alonzo. Amen. So please, please come join us. Amen. Get built up in the word. Get built up in your faith. Amen. These are classes where if you have questions. Amen. You need an answer to it. If you can't get the answer right now, they can look it up for you and come back with an answer. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Bible tells us to always have an answer. Amen. Amen. And I believe these two guys are anointed to the point that when you speak and you ask, the spirit of the living God will uh, instruct them in what to say. Amen. June is men's health month. Brothers, we got to get checked out. We got to get tested. We got to make sure that we are right. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't leave nothing if you're limping. Amen. If you're broken, if you're sick in your body. So you got to get it all together. Take care of yourself. We have to take care of our health. Amen. Look, you have, listen, us older men, I mean, I know I look only, I look like I'm only 18, but I'm talking about I'm still 47. But um, us older men, we have to set the precedence. We have to set that example. Amen. And we have to start going to the doctors. We can't be uh, uh, ashamed to say, hey, I'm, my, my, my head hurt, my back hurt, my chest is pounding. We have to let it know so we can live. So, amen, so we can bring the young men. Amen. And let them know and encourage them. Like, hey, you need to go to the doctor. Get that checked out. Don't sit there and uh, think that you Hercules or Superman because you are not a uh, superhuman. Amen. Hallelujah. Get checked, get tested, because as you get older, they're tested. We are required at a certain age to have done to make sure that we are all right, that we don't have cancers and things of that nature. So let's get involved in our own health and our own. Listen, we want God to heal. God heal me, but God said, go to the doctor. I made them here. You know, he's able. He don't need the doctor to do anything for you. He don't need nobody to do nothing. God is all powerful in who in himself. He can just say it and it happens. Amen. Hallelujah. But at the same time, he said, well, listen, I put some practice because remember doctors are practicing God has perfected it amen so we got to know that the doctor is practicing medicine God has perfected medicine amen hallelujah so while you're praying amen ain't nothing wrong with getting checked out listen sometimes you just got to prove the, the naysayers wrong listen God hear me I right, God ain't done that okay well I went to the doctor and here's the report since you won't believe what I'm saying let me let you read it and watch God do it amen but brothers, let's get checked out. So on the fourth Sunday uh, this month, please wear blue, any shade of blue, amen, to just, just in support of uh, 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 Men's Health Month this month, amen. Please continue to pray for our sick and shuddered and bereaved families. Amen. Keep, listen, pray, pray, pray for our young people. Left and right, they're falling. Amen. Amen. The enemy is, you know, doing whatever he's doing. Amen. He's going to keep doing it. But we got to lift up a banner of protection about them. A canopy of prayer over this city concerning our young people. Amen. They're doing a lot of foolish things. Some of them are doing stuff because they just think it's cool to do. Amen. Their uncle did it. Their uh, cousin and them did it and got away with it. And, and you know what I'm saying? They survived, amen. But listen, gunplay is not it's not for uh, uh it's not a toy, it's not a game, it's a real deal, it's serious. So when you, you it ain't no coming back from a, from death, ain't no coming back from that. Amen. So we have to pray for our city and keep them lifted up and keep them encouraged. We, you know, pray for this city that God will uh, open up some different avenues, some different venues for them to attend and go to where they can throw all that stuff away. Amen. Some of them do it because they don't know no better. They need mentors. Amen. And so let's see what God does. But let's keep them in prayer. Keep them lifted up. Amen. Hallelujah. Any birthdays, anniversaries this week? Or last week. Amen. Amen. We know that Dora McGuire's birthday. Amen. Hallelujah. Anita Oliver, her birthday. And Janae Richmond's birthday. Amen. Mother Patsy's granddaughter. Amen. Hallelujah. So we just thank God that you, uh, uh, God has increased your life. And we just pray that this will be the best year yet. Amen. Hallelujah. No more announcements. Oh, oh. Uh, we need a driver like ASAP. 
uh, uh, Sister Lalani is going out of town, amen, and she'll be gone for a while, amen, so we need someone to uh, be faithful and true and get the van and pick up people, amen, hallelujah, so if that's you, please get with LJ or Elder Alonzo, amen, and let them know your intentions or your availability, amen, we need that ASAP, amen, because we do have people that ride the van and we don't want them not to miss service because we don't uh, have a way to get them here, amen, so we don't have a driver or you know if you're one of those saints that live around the corner from them pick them up bring them with you amen amen hallelujah if that's all then at this time greet your neighbors with a holy kiss and let them know that this is the day
Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise right there. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. How many of you are grateful today to be in God's house? To be alive, grateful for his blessings, his miracles. Hallelujah. Come on and worship with us as we sing this song on this morning. It's flowing from my heart. 
Him with your lips right there, hallelujah. If you're grateful this morning, come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Come on, go ahead and bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for the praise team. We thank God for that rendition. Grateful unto the Lord. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Glory to God. Happy Father's Day. Amen. We thank God for you this morning. We're just so excited and so happy, amen, to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, come on, just, just can we just honor God for being a good, good father this morning? Amen. Can we just bless the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, who is worthy of all our praise, hallelujah, who is deserving, glory to God, of all honor and glory. His name is Jesus. He is a good, good father. Come on, take a few seconds and just glorify your father in heaven, hallelujah. 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 Happy Father's Day, God. Happy Father's Day, Jesus. Happy Father's Day, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If it had not been for you, glory to God. Glory to your name. You've done it again and again and again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. What a mighty God he is. What a good, good father. He is a man happy. Father's Day, Daddy, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Abba, Father, we love you this morning. We thank you, God. Hallelujah for another day to celebrate fathers. And you are our Father. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. We give God glory for Jesus' 
the Christ. Amen. Will you also help me as you stand and amen, help me give God glory and honor God for our bishop, Bishop Mark C. McGuire Sr. <laughs> Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day, Dad. We thank God for you, sir. We love you, Bishop. Happy Father's Day to Bishop Von McLaughlin. Hallelujah. And we say hallelujah for Lady Narlene this morning. Glory to God. We bless God for you and each one of you. Amen. Will you help me honor the Lord? Amen. For my lovely wife, Lady Moss. Amen. This morning. We thank God for you. Amen. We bless the Lord for you. Amen. Hallelujah. In uh, Chief, Chief Doc Bev's absence, amen, Chief Elder Doc Bev, we want to give God praise for her life and for all of our elder council, amen, Elder Ron, Elder Lonzo, Elder Baxter, Elder Long, and Elder Maurice Monroe, amen, <laughs> Brother Mo, amen. We thank God for all of, we thank God for all of our ministers, all of our uh, assistants, amen, and all the greeters and dancers, sacred dancers, and just all of you, amen, our deacons who are doing such a phenomenal job in this house. We want to say thank you for the great work and the service that you guys provided on yesterday for our brother and sister, Elder uh, Marshall and Minister Linda Marshall and their family as they celebrated the life of their nephew right here at the Potter's House, Dayton International Ministries. Amen. Come on, give God glory for your life and for what he's doing in your life and how you came out and served them. Amen. That they might have a great homegoing service for their family members. We thank God for that. You guys was phenomenal. Phenomenal work, each and every one of you. We thank God for all of you. Hallelujah. I do know there is a word for today. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but we're so excited. Amen. For the word of God. Uh, we're excited. Amen. Uh, we want to do our biblical declaration. We haven't done that in a while. I would like to do that today if we can. So those of you that have your Bibles. Amen, or whatever you're uh, receiving the word of God on this morning, your iPads, uh, your phones, amen. We're going to ask that you would hold it up high as we make our declaration unto the Lord. Amen. I, I encourage you today, amen, uh, if there's a father in your life, uh, in your children's life, amen, uh, we would pray that you would reach out to them in some kind of way or fashion, amen, and just say happy Father's Day, amen. Even if they, look here, even if they ain't been a father, amen, just bless them. How, you might know that by you saying that might cause them, amen, to turn it around in Jesus' name, amen. Tell them happy Father's Day, amen, and, and love on somebody today, amen. Hallelujah, it's on the screen. This is the word of God. Amen. We're going to ask that you repeat that to me. We don't have that. Amen. Okay. They say we do not have that. Amen. So just repeat that to me. Amen. Amen. This is the word of God. I choose to believe. <laughs> Come over and give God a great hand of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We bless God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Great God Almighty, what a great day it is, amen. Uh, uh, we were, uh, uh, the storms came through last night, amen, and I know we were some praying folk, amen, hallelujah, but we thank God, amen, this morning I woke up, met my wife, and we, we looked at each other, and we said, thank God, amen, he allowed the storms to pass over, come on, Holy Ghost, amen, thank God he allowed the storms to pass over. Amen. But we're glad that you are here on this morning. Uh, many, amen, are, are, uh, are celebrating with family and with their friends and their loved ones. And we just say thank God for that. And we give God glory for that. And uh, we're praying for um, all of our family members, our church members, uh, and their families. Amen. Uh, we thank God for all the fathers and dads and pops and those, amen, that uh, may not have biological children, amen, but uh, they stepped up and, and are fathers to those, amen, who don't have a father in their life. And we want to say happy Father's Day to you, to those, amen, to all of those, amen, that are taking the role of a dad in somebody's life, amen, trying to make a difference and trying to have act, impact in their life, amen, that they might come to know Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And live a healthy and whole, full life, amen, knowing that a father, a dad, figure, is in their life. Amen. We thank God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, the word of the uh, Lord today, um, our focal peripheries will come from 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and we'll be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 18. 
Amen. Uh, First Kings chapter two, one through four, and Second uh, Corinthians six. Amen. Eighteen, uh, verse eighteen. And the word of God uh, reads as follows. Hallelujah. Let me get my eyewear on. Glory to God. First Kings second. First Kings chapter two, verse one through four. Now the days of David drew near that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies. And as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, if your sons take heed to the way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. Don't become partners with those who reject God. How can you make a partnership out of right and wrong? That's not partnership. That's war. It's like best friends with dark. It's like best friend with dark. Amen. Does Christ go strolling with the devil? Do trust and mistrust hold hands? Who would think of setting up pagan idols in God's holy temple? But that is exactly what we are, each of us, a temple in whom God lives. Move into them. I'll be their God and they'll be my people. So leave the corruption and compromise. Leave it for good, says God. Don't line up, I'm sorry, don't link up with those who will pollute you. I want you all for myself. I'll be a father to you. You'll be sons and daughters to me. The word of the master, God. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his most holy word. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise for the word of God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Just for a little while, my friends, I want to speak with you on this subject. Being a father is a matter of choice. Amen. Being a father is a matter of choice. Let us pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you, we honor you, we bless you, Lord. We're so great, grateful to be in the house of God. We're so grateful to be in your presence. We're so grateful to be among family and friends. And Father, we just glorify your name today. We celebrate you, Lord God, because indeed you are a good, good Father. You're Jehovah God, Lord God. You are our provider, our protector. You are all that we need in our life. Without you, Lord God, we can do nothing. So we glorify your name. Hallelujah, for you are God over the universe. You're God over the world. You're God in our life. And we say, thank you, Jesus. We ask now that you would have your way, Father. Hallelujah, speak to our hearts clearly, Lord God, that we might know you better, that we might understand your precepts and your statutes, Lord God, that we might walk in your ways and that we'll be all that you've called us to be. Happy Father's Day, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God said amen, amen, and amen again. Come on, one more time. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What comes to your mind, amen, when you think about King David? Uh, I uh, had a tendency when I hear people talk about things, uh, people's past or people's life, uh, people have a tendency, like, like they did with King David, to think about uh, David and Bathsheba. Uh, a few may think about David and Goliath. Some may even think about uh, David being the shepherd boy. 
Uh, and, and then there may be a few, amen, who might look at David and who might think of him as the David that refused to, king, to kill King Saul. He had an opportunity to kill Saul, but he refused to do it. He turned it down, amen. However, most people, when they think of David, I believe one huge thing that people think of, which I believe is a mess up, uh, and most of the time we don't think about it in, this, in the right way, was that David's sin began when he was a passive man, as a king and even as a leader. Instead of going to war, you remember the story, instead of going to war or to work, like many of his men had done, he laid around on the house, around the house, and found himself on the rooftop where the rest of the story and his sin began to multiply. Amen. And so I want to remind us this morning that King David teaches us, amen, much about dealing with instead of denying our sin. When confronted by Nathan, amen, David's response serves as a picture to both men and women of how to get right with God. Somebody say, get right with God. How to repent and how to be restored. And so David taught us, amen, one of the things he taught us out of many, he taught us, amen, that he did not play the blame game. Come on, Holy Ghost. Amen. He owned up to his, to his sin. Amen. He didn't uh, uh, get angry and upset with God and begin to tell God it's your fault like Adam did, amen, in the garden when he told God, amen, when God said, where are you, amen, who told you you was naked, amen, and why you did all these things that you eat, and he said it was the woman you gave me. Come on, Holy Ghost. And so many people, amen, are going through life and they're blaming God. David, amen, refused to play the blame game. He didn't retaliate. In other words, he didn't kill the messenger. When Nathan came to him and told him, you the man, amen, he did not, amen, get upset and want to take out the messenger because the messenger brought the word from the Lord to get him right in God. Can you say amen? One of the other things he didn't do, he didn't look to take the easy way out. That's important, my friends. He owned his sin. In other words, uh, in today's line, they would say he manned up, glory to God. He repented of his sin before God and man, and he was restored later to be called a man after God's own heart. With that kind of track record, my friend, is it not surprising that David demonstrates another example to us. It is an example of taking responsibility as a man and as a father. Can you say amen? After reading and studying this message and preparing uh, for the study today, amen, I, 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 I came uh, to the thought after tossing several things around, I, I, I believe God was telling me that the, the right title uh, for this message would be uh, being a responsible father is a matter of choice. Being a responsible father is a matter of choice. Uh, simply stated, my friends, responsibility is the burden or obligation to complete some action or work. In the matter of being a father, God has given us a responsibility for loving, leading, and even one day leaving our family. That's important. I'm going to say that again. He gives us the responsibility for loving, leading, and even one day leaving our families. But don't be deceived, my friends. Amen. This means leading them according to God's word. Hallelujah. And, and, and to, or according to God's will and according to God's ways. Hallelujah. There are many dads, many of us know them, amen, that have left their families lacking, hallelujah, because uh, they failed to lead their families in the word of God opposed to leading them to the world. And I was one of those fathers, amen, at one time, amen, leading my family according to the world and not according to the word of God. Amen. And we understand that when we do that, and when we receive families of men who do that, hallelujah, we risk, amen, causing chaos and trouble. 
for our families and for our children when we're not leading them according to the word of the Lord. Can you say amen? So let's take a closer look at the text this morning. Verse 1 of uh, the uh, of the Samuel, I think was it, I went and lost my, my page. Not Corinthians, but the uh, first verse 1 of the uh, Kings, 2 Kings 2 verse 1. When we look at, we want to look at those four verses, but we want to take a look at the first verse where uh, the Bible says that now the days of David drew near that he should die and he charged Solomon his son. Hallelujah. He charged Solomon his son. This is important uh, because uh, we understand that David understood that something was about to take place in his life. And so we, we, we see in the word, the Bible tells us in verse 1, uh, that number one, these are sobering words for us to, to grasp a hold of. But it lets us know, amen, the reality of a father. The reality of a father. David was going to die and he knew it. Come on, Holy Ghost. And we, 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 we buried a young man here on yesterday, amen, and, and, and I don't know about you, but I've, 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 I've buried uh, 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 my two wives prior to my first wife, and, and each one of them prior to their death, uh, as we were praying, as we were uh, just comforting them and trying to be with them, uh, I, 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 I buried my father, amen, and I remember on each occasion, amen, that each one of them, they had a sense, amen, that they were about to go be with the Lord. And so sometimes uh, people, uh, when they're dying or when they feel like, amen, they're about ready to give up, amen, and be about ready to go home and be with the Lord, they, they, they begin to ask certain questions or they begin to say certain things that kind of push you in the mind frame, amen, that they're they about ready to go. They're ready to, they ready, to, they ready, to, they ready to go now because they're tired, amen, or, they, or they, they're tired of holding on or they're tired of doing whatever it is uh, that they have been doing. And so here the reality of a father is, is that David was going to die and he knew it. And so as it, when we understand that we don't, we, we, uh, you know, we don't know what, what the reason was why he was dying. I, I don't know if it was because of his, he was sick. I don't know if it was because of some kind of injury or, or even if it was because of old age. Uh, we, we, we don't know. But, but I do know many people don't like talking about death. Come on, Holy Ghost. It's something that we just don't want to deal with, amen, and, and, and so we kind of push it under the rug and we don't deal with it, but here David, amen, understood that he had a responsibility, amen, to his son, and, and so the, the Bible says that David was about to die, and he went the way, uh, 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 now let me say this, he, he was either going the way of the world or he was about ready to give up or leave his life. One or the other, we don't know which one it was. I believe it was just the fact he was leaving up, living his life he, because I believe he came to know the Lord, amen, after repenting of his sins and after turning his heart toward God. The Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. And so I believe it was just because perhaps of old age, amen, and his time uh, was up. I remember, amen, uh, back in 2012, uh, my father... Uh, went home to be with the Lord, and I remember uh, prior to him passing, I was able uh, to lead my father to the Lord, and, and I remember, amen, thinking uh, in that last year, amen, uh, you know, that this might be our last Father's Day with, with my father, and I remember, amen, uh, taking advantage of those moments uh, of, of making every day count, amen, that, that we had with him, uh, because we knew, amen, that, that he was ill and that, uh, and that his, his time was short. And so I remember, amen, uh, as we studied this text, I, re I was reminded, amen, of the importance that I need to do as a father to make some changes about how I live my life with my children, with my grandchildren, and with my wife. I, I understood, amen, that I, I need to make some changes, amen, because the truth of the matter is, family of God, I'm not going to be here forever, and you not either. Come on, Holy Ghost. 
And so David, amen, and I believe God used him and used the word of God to help us understand that there are some things that we can be doing, hallelujah, with our children, with our grandchildren, and with our family, and with one another, amen, that will prepare them, amen, for when we're gone. Can you say amen? Too many men and dads have left their families not having been prepared for the time when they will no longer be with them. They may prepare financially or vocationally, and we know that's good. We appreciate that. We understand that. But many families, my friend, are left unprepared because they didn't do the work or making them ready. Here are a few examples that the Spirit of the Lord placed in my heart. How can we help people to get ready for when we're not here as fathers? We ought to have a life insurance policy. Come on, Holy Ghost. We ought to have a living will, amen, that gives some direction and some order about, amen, what we want done with our properties or with our belongings or with the things, amen, that God has blessed us with. We ought to have, amen, a BMW. Come on, Holy Ghost. What's that mean? We ought to be able to teach our sons and our daughters the value of hard work, a blessed man working. Come on, Holy Ghost. I wasn't talking about BMW with a car, amen. I like to have one of those, amen. But I'm talking about the BMW, amen, the blessed men working, amen. Some would say black men working, amen. Or some would say whatever you say, but we ought to be blessed men working, hallelujah, for the Lord, that we might provide for our families. And we ought to teach our sons how to do the value of hard work. We ought to know, amen, the will of God for our life. We ought, to, we ought to be an example of showing our children not being religious or just talking about religion or just talking about God, but we ought to have a personal relationship with God, hallelujah, that exemplifies the fact that we're being all that God has called us to be. Can you say Amen. We ought to be what God has called us to be. Deuteronomy 31 and verse 7 says this. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage for you must go with the people, with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them and you shall cause them to inherit it. Amen. There are some things that God has called us as men of God, hallelujah, that we must do. We are to be leaders. We're to lead folk. Amen. We're supposed to take charge. Hallelujah. We ought to be the ones, amen, setting the example for our families. Come on, Holy Ghost. And so I understand, amen, that there are many who do not want to hear the truth because, amen, we don't want to think about these things. But I challenge the men and women of God of the potter's house. What type of legacy, amen, will you leave for your children and your children's children? Will the circle be unbroken? Come on, Holy Ghost. There's a song, amen, that we used to sing years ago. I've heard many churches sing it. And it, and it says something like, uh, will the circle be unbroken? By and by, Lord, by and by. You remember, some of y'all remember that? Well, the circle, that there's a home. There's a home in heaven. In heaven. Something, 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 something. Amen. But the, the point is, amen, is that, uh, is that we, ought to, we ought to be willing to keep the circle of God alive in our life. We ought to be passing on to our children. They ought to see living examples of us reading the word of God, praying to the Lord. They ought to hear us praising and worshiping God. They ought to hear us crying out in the midnight hour, amen, when we don't know what to do, amen, that we can call on an almighty God who knows all things and knows everything, nothing he don't know, amen. We ought to know, we ought to be an example that our children, glory to God, hallelujah, keep the circle, hallelujah, of following Christ all the days of their life. For there is a home awaiting in glory, Lord, by and by. We're going to get there, amen. Yet, it's the reality 
for every person, glory to God, every family, everywhere, not just here at the Potter's House, but everywhere. That when we don't deal with life and the responsibility of life, it sets us up, amen, for chaos to set in. And when the time comes, amen, we leave our family and friends, hallelujah, in an uproar because they don't know what to do because we did not prepare them the way we should have as fathers. Hallelujah. David teaches us that it is our responsibility, amen, to lead our families, to be spiritually prepared for every chapter in their life, even the difficult ones. Men of God, I implore us today, amen, and those watching, hallelujah, this message over the web, I, I implore us, glory to God, hallelujah, to do this and prepare our family. This is our call. This is our mantle. This is our challenge. And yes, this, my friend, is our responsibility in the blessed name of Jesus. Part of being ready, amen, for this final earthly chapter and making sure our family is ready is twofold. Number one, we ought to make sure that you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And they need to see it. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, we need to make sure we got a relationship with God. Hallelujah. But not only a relationship that's hidden, you know, we got some Christians, we, we hide our relationship. Amen. And we only talk to God in private and, in, and outside in the world, we somebody else. Come on, Holy Ghost. No, no, no. We, we, got, we, got, we got to have a relationship, a real relationship with Jesus, but we can't be ashamed, hallelujah, to let everybody see it. Glory to God. Mark chapter 8, verse 38 says this, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man, also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I don't know about you, my friend, but I don't want God to be ashamed, amen, when it comes time to call him my name. Amen. I don't want him to be ashamed. I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Amen. Hallelujah. I look here. I don't need nobody. Look here. I don't want to be ashamed to tell somebody, amen, that Jesus saved a whole wretch like me. Amen. No, no, I ain't ashamed of it. I thank God for the, for the sister yesterday. That sister came walking down the aisle, praising the Lord, talking about amazing grace. And I just shook my head. I said, Lord, have mercy. There that grace go again. Hallelujah. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope you're not ashamed of it either. Amen. No, uh, we can't be ashamed of this thing because Jesus, he said, he told us clearly, if you were ashamed of me and my words, I'm going to be ashamed of you when it comes time for you, amen, to enter into glory with my Father. How many dads do we know that have passed and their children have to guess what their religion ought to be? Come on, Holy Ghost. How many dads do we know that are nowhere to be found, amen, and, and children are having to grow up, amen, wondering, amen, uh, if, if, if God is the God of all religions, amen. Can I be Buddha? Can I be with Buddha, amen, or Confucius? Can I be with either one of them, amen, and still make it to heaven? Come on, Holy Ghost. And so we got to make sure, my friends, that we're a living example of who Jesus Christ is and what it means, hallelujah, to have a personal relationship with him. That's our responsibility. And so we have to come to the place, amen, we have to be the resolve of a father. Come on, Holy Ghost. Look at the last part of verse 1. David charged, commanded, or even commissioned Solomon. What does that mean? 
One part of the word means to lay upon. I heard somewhere else, amen, a, a dear Abby, uh, Abigail Van Buren said one time, she, she, uh, she, they wrote, if, if you want your children to keep their feet on the ground, put some responsibility on their shoulders. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, if you want your children to keep their feet on the ground, put some responsibility on their shoulders. Look at a little responsibility ain't hurt nobody. Come on, Holy Ghost. Uh, that, that's one of our problems, amen. We're afraid to give our children some responsibility, amen, because we think, amen, they're going to be mad at me, amen. They ain't going to like me, amen. Now the devil is a lie. From a life of hell, glory to God, down the road. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Come on, Holy Ghost. And so here, here God says in Rome, uh, I'm in Proverbs, look at Proverbs 22, verse 6. I heard it read this way. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. How many of us, amen, I don't know about y'all, don't, don't raise your hand, amen, just, look, just keep looking ahead. But how many of y'all, amen, was considered a knucklehead come growing up? Come on, Holy Ghost. Hey, I'm, I'm just going to raise both my hands, amen. I'm going to put a foot in there too, amen, amen. I mean, I was disobedient, I was rebellious, I was a liar, a cheat, I was everything and some. Come on, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Uh, but, 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 but God says if you train up a child in the way that they go, hallelujah, when they get old, they will not depart from it. That don't mean they ain't going to go through nothing. That don't mean they might drift off somewhere. But what it means when the time comes, when, when they got to think about the matter, when they got to look back over their life, hallelujah, they're going to make it to the decision. Wait a minute. I remember, hallelujah, when mama used to pray. I remember how granddaddy and daddy used to pray. I remember, amen, when mama needed help, she called on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's where my help's going to come from. When you get old, ain't it funny? Growing up, we talk stuff, we tell our friend, I don't never want to be like my daddy. But my mama and I, I don't never want to be like my mama. Man, they just nag all the time, and it's always work, work, work. I ain't going to never, my son told me, he said, Daddy, my, one of my sons, uh, he's he, he 23 years, he said, Daddy, I ain't going to be like you and mama. I ain't going to, I ain't going to work all my life. I said, well, son, you're going against the Bible. What do you mean you ain't going to work? You got to work. If you want to have what you have, you got to work for it. Ain't nobody going to hand you nothing free. Ain't nobody going to just give you nothing. Hey, Amen. You got to work. The Bible says if a man don't work, he don't eat. Come on, Holy Ghost. But watch this. Proverbs 22, verse 6, according to the message. I love this. Point your kids or your children in the right direction. Come on, Holy Ghost. And when they are old, they won't be lost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, Holy Ghost. Point them in the right direction. Amen. And the time will come when they get of age. Amen. They will not be lost. I promise you the word of the Lord will come alive in their heart. Amen. And they'll turn and get themselves together because of the word that you planted in their life when they were babies. Come on, Holy Ghost. Amen. Some of us was one of them. We were taught the word. We were told the word. We were prayed over. Folk prayed over us and laid hands on us and all kind of stuff. Amen. Ordered us down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They told us, hallelujah. Boy, you're a heathen. Hallelujah. You need much prayer. Glory to God. Amen. And here we are now, amen, 40, 50 years later, amen, hallelujah, standing in the house of the Lord, giving God praise for all God has done in our life, hallelujah. Go ahead and give God a praise, hallelujah. He did it, won't he do it? Hallelujah, I'm a witness, he will. Come on, Holy God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, won't he do it? I'm a witness, come on, Holy God. Amen. But point them in the way. Give them some direction. Lead them, amen, that they will not be lost. Hallelujah. My friends, many of us are fully aware that responsibility isn't a curse. I know sometimes as a young man, I used to think it was. Come on, Holy Ghost. 
But really, responsibility is a blessing. Can you say amen? Booker T. Washington once said, few things help an individual more than to place responsibility upon him and to let him know that you trust him. Amen. Few things help an individual more than to place responsibility upon him for it lets him know that you trust him. You, you, you want to you wanna see your children rise to the occasion? Let them be in charge of some things, amen. Give them some responsibility, amen, hallelujah. And they'll work as hard as they know how, amen. I, I told my boy, I said, clean your room up, amen. I said, boy, I know y'all can do it. Clean that room up, amen, it's going to be a blessing. About 10 minutes later, they come out and tell my dad, it's clean. <laughs> Glory to God. And I'm sitting there, I told my wife, I said, baby, I know that room ain't clean. Glory to God. They had stuff everywhere. I said, Glory to God, I know that room ain't clean. He said, yes, it is, daddy, yes, it is. The whole way, yes, it is, daddy, amen. I went in there, amen, they had stuff everywhere, amen. But for them, it was clean. And so you know what I did? I had to play along. I said, amen. I said, I told my part of me, like, boy, y'all better get this room cleaned up, Lord God. I said, I said, boy, praise God. Hey, y'all did a wonderful job. Hey, but you know what? I saw y'all left something. You forgot about something. Let me help you clean that up. Come over here and look at this. Come on, let go. But you encourage them where they are, amen. And get in and help them out every now and then, amen. And so now, they, every time they got to clean the room, hey, Daddy, can you come help us clean our room? I told him one day, I didn't help you make the mess, glory to God. But we got to help them. And one way we help them, that, that helps show them, amen, the importance of being responsible for what's yours. If you got, you know, kids, and, and I tell them, you know, if you're not going to take care of it, daddy's going to give it to somebody that will. You got to take, if you want it, you got to take care of it. Amen. And so we have a responsibility to teach them these values and these, this important uh, message about the word of God, about responsibility. Can you say amen? David, knowing of his mortality and knowing that the world would not stop when he was gone. And that's another thing. When our family members leave, life goes on. People still got to live. People still got to get up and go to work, amen, the next day. I think we get, what, three days off for the immediate family, but if it's an auntie or uncle, you only get one day. You got to go to work. You got to continue to do what you do. And David understood. David had a conversation with his son. And he, and he, he wanted to be clear to Solomon. And he wanted to be succinctly in place. Amen. He wanted him to know, amen, the importance and the calling on his life. He wanted him to know, he wanted him to know the weight of what the, of the responsibility that he was going to have to now bear. There was a song my mom and them used to play years ago. I don't remember all of it, but I remember, I remember part of it because it stuck with me. It said, my papa was a great old man. I can see him with a shovel in his hand say every word that he ever said. Something, something, something. But Papa, glory to God, was somebody that always worked. Papa was somebody, amen, that set the example for others to follow. Papa was the one, amen, that when things went on in the community, amen, he wasn't waiting for somebody else to do it, amen. He was the one, amen, that stepped in first, amen, and then everybody else joined him, glory to God. But God wants us to be the kind of man, amen, hallelujah, that when we have the opportunity to share the importance and the calling on our young men's life, amen, we need to help them understand the weight of what they're about ready to walk into. And they got to know, amen, that the weight that would be left with them once we're gone. David resolved not to leave the scene of his life without giving godly effort at preparing his son for what lies ahead of him. I, I, I tremble, to be honest with you, as a parent, as a father, 
I, I tremble, in, you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm praying constantly and diligently. As I look at my sons and I see them growing, Sharik will be, Prince Sharik will be six years old next month I'm in August. And, and, and it's going into the first grade, and, and, and I'm, I'm trembling. I'm thinking, like, my God, this world that we live in, amen, this thing's just not right, amen, all kind of stuff going on, amen. But we got to prepare them, amen, for where they are in life. We got to talk to him. He told me this morning, amen. He said, Daddy, he said, man, I asked Mama if she would fix me some breakfast, and she said, not right now, just give me a minute. He said, Daddy, but I can't wait. And I had to sit down and talk to him, amen. In the midst of preparing my message, I had to stop for a minute, amen, and help him explain to him, amen, hallelujah, those that wait on the Lord, amen, shall receive from the hand of God. You've got to learn the importance of being able to wait and not being so anxious, so anxious, amen, to get what you're trying to get. I said the same way you have to wait in line when you go to McDonald's. They love McDonald's. You got to wait in line. You can't just run up and jump in front of folk talking about you want what you want, amen, uh, you know. No, you got to wait. And so I had to have a conversation with him to help him understand waiting is good. Matter of fact, when you get it, amen, you'll be, oh, glory to God, this is good, amen. But these are conversations, amen, I know, and I know, amen, this is, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is for some, amen, is, 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 is basic, amen, but it's, it's where we live. It's reality. And too many of us, amen, and we, and we stressed out and we mad because our children, amen, won't, 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 won't succumb to what we're trying to get them to do, and, and uh, the man ain't doing what he's supposed to do, the wife ain't doing what she's supposed to do, and everybody in the house is mad, amen, and hear God say, take a time out, amen, and just spend time talking to one another, glory to God. Just, just, just take, take a few minutes, take a few seconds, amen, and talk to your children. And I looked at him, his little eyes watered up. I said, do you understand what I'm saying, son? He said, yes, sir, but I'm still hungry. <laughs> I said, glory to God, amen. I said, you're going to eat in a few minutes, man, I promise, man, amen. Amen. It's 6.30 in the morning. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. I said, like, go back to bed, man. Glory to God. But it's our responsibility, amen, to teach them the importance, the calling, and the weight of what God is holding them accountable for. So David resolved, amen, that he was going to give the best effort he could in preparing his son for what lied ahead of him. Today, Father, I, I pray, I implore us to be a father, to be a dad, to be a pop like that of David. Not like the worldly father of our day where many are more interested in what sports team their son should root for, how much money they should make, or even how popular a man they are with the women, how many women they can have or get opposed to their children being spiritually connected to God. Let me ask you a question, my friends. Do your sons, fathers, do your sons trust Jesus? Do your children love the Lord? Do they follow Jesus? Or maybe the question is, do they even know his name? Too many dads, males, are resolved to teach their kids about the things of the world, which are temporal, and depends on their children to figure out spiritual things for themselves. Dads, you know, let me say, if that's you, don't fret it. If that's not you, don't fret it. But if it is you, my friend, you got three options. Number one, you can get mad at me as the messenger. Number two, you can ignore the message. Or number three, you can hear the message and do something about it. The better thing is to allow the word of God to speak to your heart this morning. 
And if it bothers you, amen, ask yourself, why does this message bother me so much? For the world, my friend, needs to be prepared for men of God. The world needs to know, amen, that there are some fathers and some dads, amen, that love their children and that will do whatever they need to do, amen, to teach their children the ways of the Lord. And so that means it comes to this third point I want to make, the role of a father. I got a friend of mine who told me years ago, Minister Roger Corr, he once said to me, being a male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of choice. Being a male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of choice. One chooses to be a man. In verse 2, David said this, When I die, be strong and prove yourself to be a man. When you tell a young boy to prove himself, somebody said you better clear out the way, glory to God. It's like the Hebrew word for prove is called haul y'all. Haul y'all. Sound like something you say to a hog or something. Haul y'all. However, this brings about a problem because what exactly is a man? How do you define manhood? How do boys know when they are men? And the questions go on and on. And honestly, most of us, we make it up as we go. Come on, Holy Ghost. Uh, in, in the movie uh, called, in the movie or the, the, the book, they got a book out too, in the, called The Wild at Heart. Uh, there's a young man by the name of John Estridge, Eldridge, and he, he's, he, tells, he tells a story that every man has a battle to fight. Every man has a beauty to win. And every man has an adventure to live. Now that gives us insight into the heart of a man, but not the definition of a man. A young man by the name of Robert Lewis once said, men's fraternity offers us a clear definition of a man when he said, a man rejects passivity, accepts responsibility, leads courageously, and expects God's greater reward. A real man is one that has set aside the agenda of the world for God's agenda. Can you say amen? He has realized that what he is not and what God is. He embraces the truth that God called him first to a daily, personal, and deeply spiritual walk with him. Why? Because the Bible says that the eternal destination of the spiritual condition of his family and of his heart is the man's responsibility. God is calling us as fathers and as men, amen, to be responsible, amen, for the condition of our families. God ain't called, we thank God for mothers, but God ain't called you to be a father. Come on, Holy Ghost. Amen. And I, and, I, and I hate to, you know, I hear sisters say it all the time, I'm the father and the mother. No, I says, you the mother, you ain't the father. You're doing the best you can to be a dad. You're doing the best you can to lead them as a father would, but you are not, you cannot be the daddy. Come on, Holy Ghost. No, just be what God called you to be and do it the best you can with excellence. You do it so well, they look up and say, I don't need no daddy. My mama is everything. My mama provide me. Amen. But let's but 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 let's but let's keep it real, amen. And be the men of God and the father of God that God has called us to be for our family. It is our responsibility, amen. And it's time that we get to it if we're not doing it. Can you say amen? A real man is keenly aware of his personal responsibility. 
and, and he, he possesses the resolve to lead his boy, his children, to the role of being a man. Becoming a real man only be happens, only begins, or can begin to happen uh, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Exodus 15, verse 2, said, The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Amen. Your sons and daughters need to know that the Lord is your strength and he has become your salvation. They need to be aware and know and understand that he is God and he's God all by himself. Glory to God. Prepare your house, your habitation, your heart, your mind. Amen, unto the Lord. Let them understand what it means, amen, to have this personal relationship. It's not about just talking about being religious. It's about being holy before the Lord, glory to God. It's about being righteous before God and allowing our children to witness it every day of their life. I know my two cents ain't worth much, but what the world needs now, my friend, might be love. Sweet love, somebody said that. But the greater need, what the world needs, is for godly men who will lead their children, their sons and their daughters to become godly men and women. And I don't have time, amen, to properly develop that, that statement, amen, but there is a difference between being a good old boy and being a godly man. Come on, Holy Ghost. I said, there is a difference from being a good old boy and being a godly man. We need the latter. We need men to be godly men of God. Amen. And we need to be able to admit when we're wrong. We need to be able to say, you know, I blew it. I didn't do it right. Amen. I messed up. Hallelujah. But we got to be, but, 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 but also they need to be able to see us. Amen. When we fall, we get up. Come on, Holy Ghost. When we blow it, they see us get up. Amen. Admit, hey, you know what? I messed that up. I done, I done went to my son. I went to my five-year-old. And I told her, I said, you know what, son? The other day when I said that to you, I thought about it. Daddy was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said it the way I said it. And, and, and I apologize that I did that. And, and I asked him, will you forgive me of that, son? He said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I forgive you. I said, but you do know that, 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 that there are times daddy got to correct you when you, when you do wrong. I got I, I, I to I gotta, I gotta, I gotta chastise you. I got to make sure. I got to discipline you. He said, yes, sir. But I was able, uh, when God said, go back and make it right, go make it right. Don't provoke our children to anger. Go, go back and look at if if you if you if you if 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 you if you if you yelled at them or you said something out of out of anger because you was upset about something else or somebody else that made you mad and you snapped at the baby for whatever reason. Go back and make it right. Go back and say, you know what? <laughs> I just want to tell you, son, I messed up. I shouldn't have did that. Daddy should not have yelled at you like that. I apologize. Will you forgive me? It teaches them, amen, the importance of being able to own up to their own sin and being able. Amen. If we can't, listen, if we can't go and repent and ask our children to forgive us for our behavior and for things that we've done and said, hallelujah, in front of them and before them, hallelujah, how do you expect them, glory to God, to come and honor you and respect you, glory to God, hallelujah, when you don't respect them? Come on, Holy Ghost. We got a responsibility. Hallelujah. And so I hear God saying, the revelation of a father, we see in verse 3 and 4 of 1 Kings 2. The revelation by David to Solomon should burn deep in his heart or in our hearts. Basically, what it says is that if you want to have a blessed life, here is how you, it's going to come to pass. And it seems to me that Solomon heard 
this charge, and when he was offered the deal of a lifetime, God granted him his wish. Solomon relied on the counsel that his father gave him. My friends, God has placed people in your life, men, women and men. God has placed mentors and others and people who have gone on before us, who, who have instructed us, who shared in our hearts and in our lives things, amen, to help us in this, in this journey, amen. And if we would just pay attention to what they've shared, if we would just stop arguing and fussing and just listen to what they got to say, amen, it'll come to pass. I can't tell you how many times my mom and my dad have said things to me in my past, amen, and here it is years later, I'm seeing it come to pass. And so Solomon, hallelujah, relied on the counsel that his father gave him in his young years. In a day that seems to be highlighted, hallelujah, with billfold men and bedroom dads. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. We're living in a world where we get, we're dealing with a lot of men that are billfold men. In other words, the only, only, the only time they come around is when they give money to the kids. Come on, Holy Ghost or give money to the baby's mama. Or they come around, amen, to be bedroom dads, amen. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. But God is calling us to remember how to repent and how to return to God's design for our lives. Ask yourself, my friend, am I the man that God has called me or, I, or am I the husband that God has called me to be? Am I the dad that honors God or am I just a male or am I just, as some women would say, a sperm donor? Come on, Holy Ghost. I heard women say it. I heard him say it. Oh, he, ain't, he ain't no father. He ain't no dad. He wasn't nothing but a sperm donor. You're sending the wrong message to your son. It's not okay for us to lay around and have babies, 10 and 15 babies for about 10 and 15 different women. That, that ain't God. Come on, Holy Ghost. And so God gives us opportunity to repent and to return to God's design for our lives. We can become the man that God has called us to be. And we can do it, amen, knowing that God is able, amen, to turn our lives around. He's a loving God, amen. He's not holding our sins over us. The Bible says when we confess our sins, our faults to him, amen, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Being a father, being a man is a matter of choice. We choose to be men of God. We choose to be fathers. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, I'm coming to a close. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. We, we, need, to, we need to ask ourselves, are the people in our circle, if they're saying that they don't know God, could it be, amen, because we're not presenting him to them? Or could it be that our presentation of God, hallelujah, glory to God, uh, glory to God has been deflected, amen? We've got a responsibility to show people what God looks like, how God acts, how he loves. We are to be his hands extended, his feet in the earth. Now let me say that there are some great men of God, great fathers, some great dads. There are some men that might not even be in the church, but they're doing great things for families, for children. There are some fathers in this community, in this church, that have stepped up and became dads to others who don't have their father in their life. And so we know that some dads cook for their families, great cooks. Some dads play with their children consistently. 
Some dads don't know their children, unfortunately. Some pops are strong. Some pops are strict. Some pops, amen, some fathers are what we call BMWs. They're blessed men working all the days of their life to care for their family and their children. Some fathers stay home and take care of the home. Amen. Then the wife works and she does all the things outside the house. Some fathers, amen, are gone too soon. We wish they were still here. Some fathers love God with all their heart, soul, and mind and strength. Some fathers, amen, don't even know their fathers. Some fathers want to know their children. And because mom has art with the father, she's withholding the children from their dad. Don't let that be you. Don't, 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 don't let that be you, my friends. God put mothers and fathers on this earth because he knows that our children and our families need both mom and dad. And so whatever we can, whatever we got to do, even if you're not getting along with the father or the mother, y'all not getting, y'all not seeing eye to eye, things ain't going the way it's supposed to go, amen. Work out some kind of compromise, amen, where both of y'all can be a part of those children's life. Come on, Holy Ghost. It might not be what you want to do, but it's the truth anyhow. Be what God has called you to be. Being a father, being a man is a matter of choice. Being a male is a matter of birth. You can't choose if you're going to be a male or not. That's just the way you were born. But by God, you can choose if you're going to be a man or not. And so I submit to the house that we have men of God, men of standard men who are going to take responsibility for our own wrongs, for our own sins, and for our children, and for our family. And we're going to lead them in the way of the Lord. That's what God has called us to do, and that's what we're going to do in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise for the men of God in this house. Come on, give God praise for the man of God. If you got a father, if you got a man of God in your life that has stepped up, that's doing what he's supposed to do, you ought to give God praise for him. You ought to thank God for his life. You ought to give God glory, amen, for the man of God in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for those that are stepping up and for those that are doing what they're supposed to do. I, I'll give you, I'm going to tell you a little joke. A little, it was a joke. I didn't take it as a joke when it was said to me. <laughs> but my second wife, uh, uh, she passed of uh, breast cancer uh, back in 2008. And one day we were having a conversation. And we were talking about the responsibility of what men are supposed to do. And, you know, I, I, I was feeling some kind of way because I thought I was doing pretty good. And I said, well, baby, you know, I work hard to put clothes on, 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 the, on the kids' back. I work hard to put food on the table. I work hard to, make, to keep the lights on and, and, and to make sure, hey, amen, you got transportation. I mean, I was going on and on and on. And after I finished, she, said, she looked at me. She said, yeah, you do that, baby. She said, but that's what you're supposed to do. You ain't did nothing special. She said, if I wasn't here, you got to do that. I felt like this. I felt like this. But the chief was telling the truth. And too many fathers, we think, amen, because we're putting food on the table, because we're putting clothes on their back, and because we're making sure they get to school and got shoes on their feet, we think we're doing something, amen. She ought to respect me. All the work I do, I do. Yeah, you, you do that. We thank God you do that. But, brother, don't get too beside yourself. You're supposed to do that. Ain't nobody got to give you no special cake or nothing special because you're doing that. That's what you're supposed to do. Come on, Holy Ghost. And so I learned a valuable lesson even back years ago. There's some things that we do, we can't 
you know, if a woman, if your wife or your girl, your significant other is not giving you credit for what you think you ought to get credit for, and ladies, y'all need to know, men like to be credit. We like, we like for you to pat us on the back and tell us we're doing a good job. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give you an inside look into a man's heart. Come on, Holy Ghost. Even though, amen, they, both, they do it. We supposed to do that. Look, don't be like my wife. Don't tell a man that, especially if, if you, because you're breaking a little heart. <laughs> I've been, see, I've, I've been through some things. I was tough. I, I could take it, <laughs> you know. I didn't like it, glory to God. I'm looking at her like, well, yeah. well, amen, amen. But she told me the truth, and it helped change my life. There are things God has called us to do that we just have to do. And we shouldn't be looking to get paid for it or to get a pat on the back or, or hold it over the kid's head. Boy, I bought you them shoes you got on your feet. Your mama ain't did that. No, stop all that. You did what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. You brought them into the world. Take care of them. Come on, Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Ladies, y'all should have said amen right there. Glory to God. But we thank God for fathers, and we thank God for men who are choosing to be men. We've got some great men in this house. Great men. Deacon Dante, one of, one of these great men, his, 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 his sister's fiance uh, was killed, lost his life not long ago. And Brother Dante, he was already helping anyway, but after uh, the the father was gone, Dante stepped in as a big brother, as a father figure, and he's doing great things, trying to go to school, trying to work, trying to hold down a job. He's an entrepreneur. He's doing all these great things, amen, but he take time, amen, to be a father, to be a dad, and to be a big brother to his nephews and his nieces and, uncle and, uncle and, cousin and family members. That's what, we, that's what we're called to do. You see a sister in need of some help, don't talk about how bad the kids are. Get in there and help her. Sister, what can I do to help you? Can I take one of the babies? Can, I, can, 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 can we take the kids to a park with you or something? Can we, can we, how, what can we do to assist you? Amen. I told my wife, I said, baby, don't get frustrated. Baby, call one of the sisters. <laughs> or leave them home with me. I, I got them, amen. She, uh, uh, she do that all the time, amen. I'd be like, where you going, baby? Like, I'll be back. You keep the kids, I'll be back. <laughs> Glory to God. I told her one day, I said, sis, you've been around the sisters too long, amen. <laughs> amen. Yeah, I, you've been around the sisters too long, amen. But hey, we love you, we thank God for you. Uh, what am I saying? All I'm saying really is honor the people, the men of God that God has placed in your life. I'm not saying we do everything right. I'm not saying we're going to make every, every right choice, every right decision. But I'm saying, amen, when they're doing something good, when they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, when they're trying to be the best that they can be, don't tear them down. Don't dog them out. When they're trying to love and they're not calling you B-I-T-C-H's and they're not doing all that stuff, don't call them a wimp. Come on, hold it. Go. I don't understand what it is about some of these women. If a man is trying to love them and, and, and talk about the Bible with them and, 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 and want to wanna bless them, they're looking at him like, man, why you, why you so weak? Why you, you ain't always been like that. I want you to go back to where you used to be when you was rowdy, rowdy, and, and you was cussing me out, and you was smacking me all upside my head and everything. What is that? Who, who, who wants that? Glory to God. I know, I know, I know this ain't, this ain't that message, amen. But it's the truth anyhow. We got some people, they just love chaos. They, they, if it's too quiet, if, if you ain't yelling and screaming, it, it, something's wrong. But I promise you, if you ever get a taste of the peace of God, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> if, you, if you ever get a taste of the real peace of God, where you can come home and lay down and put your feet up, Amen. And the wind is blowing. Hey, the, the wife is happy. The kids are sitting down. Amen. Watching whatever they are. They, I mean, praise God. Look, I will take the peace of God anytime. And the one way, my friends, that we get peace in our home 
is for us as men to be the man God has called us to be. Because if we as men are at peace, I promise you our family is going to be at peace. You want to see what chaos looks like? There's chaos in your home. You want to see what's going on in your man's heart? Just look what's going on in this house. Come on, Holy Ghost. If you see chaos all around this house, that lets you know what's going on in the mind. Come on, Holy Ghost. That's why the Bible tells us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Think on these things. We can bring peace. Peace is available for us. Every household. Peace is available. We don't have to live stressed out, angry, and bitter, and at each other's throat. All the, We ain't got to live like that every day of our life. No, the devil is the lie. We can choose to be men, and we can choose to live in peace. And if you're not in peace, my friend, you take the necessary steps, amen, to clean your house and get your house in order and live in the peace of God. Can you say amen? Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. We love you. We thank God for you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Let's celebrate God for our pastor. Amen. Come on, y'all doing pretty good. Y'all tired? Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Look, this is that part of the service that we want to give you the invitation that everything you've heard, that if you've heard, you felt God tugging at your heartstrings, and you know, maybe you, you want to be in relationship with him, you've been a little, you know, uh, you've been counting on the fence, you want to, you ain't real sure, but this is that time of the service, that if you feel God, you heard God, you know he was speaking to you, we, would, we just want to give you that invitation now to come to Jesus, amen? Nothing else matters. I heard my pastor say it's all about having a relationship. It starts right there. It's about our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All of our other relationships hinge upon that relationship being intact. Amen. Amen. So if you're here today and you're not sure, if you're here today and you want to recommit your life to Christ, we want to offer you that opportunity now. Amen. Amen. So everybody in here saved, right? If Jesus, if, if he cracked the sky right now, we all going to be with him, right? Come on, and that's something to celebrate about. That's something to celebrate right there. Amen. All right, it is Father's Day, and I tell you what, I got... I got a couple of them women in my ministry that you was talking about, Pastor. They, they, I, they, they, I don't tell them what to do. They just plan it. They tell me what they're going to do. They get mad with me if I disagree. And then every once in a while, I have to say, now I am the elder. Every once in a while, I have to say that. Amen. And we are going to do things decent and old, but they are the greatest people. Let me tell you something. They are the greatest people. So I'm going to bring my lovely wife, amen, and Mom Patsy. Mom Patsy is my censor, y'all. In class, when I'm teaching or preaching, she keep me from cussing. Lord, amen. Come on, y'all. Look, I see some of y'all cussing in the church. Yeah, well, amen. That's why you got a censor. She keep me from cussing. Amen. And we're getting better. Amen. Amen. So we got a little something we would like for all the, I'm going to let them do it. They, amen. Hello. Um, praise the Lord. We would like to show our appreciation for the fathers by extending gifts to them for Father's Day. Um, we do appreciate you all of you. We watch, we see what you do. You are our leaders, and we just really appreciate everything that you do. So we're going to, we're going to call names or just pass out? Okay, we're just going to. Uh, yes, come on down. Um, the 
elders. Okay. love you guys. We appreciate you. We know that you work hard. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Y'all see that? How man gonna win? Amen. But behind, look, this is what I know behind every strong man, there's a strong woman. Amen. And my pastor said it. I just want to reiterate it. Women, be careful how you put your mouths on your man. You can build him or you can break him. 